Holy shit, you're on the air! Welcome to One World Healing. I am your host, Mr. Blue, here along with spiritual master guru, Jeff Rennell, in the house. <laughs> it's like, what title is that? Not a guru. Not a guru, just a guy learning and sharing experiences. I'm my own guru. Just like everybody else should be their own guru. Exactly. Yes. I am the blue guru. You are? Jeff's guru. Jeff's guru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, th that's actually a great question to start with is, where did the journey begin for you? And what tools did you have to accomplish along the way to be Jeff's guru, to be what you are now, to have the awareness that you have now? Well, I mean, yeah, the little awareness that's here right now. <laughs> it's working now, but, you know, there's so much more. Uh, but it, it started, of course, at birth. <laughs> right. And I'd have to say, seriously, uh, at birth, because ever since I can remember, I always had that, uh, just that the passion and just desire to understand more about Jesus and his morals and I always believed that we could heal and do things I just I believe if everything was energy then anything's possible so I would lay awake at night thinking about stuff like that and that you know the stars had to end but it couldn't end and then it had to end but it can't end and uh, you know all that crazy stuff because you know that's pretty weird so my whole life I've had weird thoughts like that until I got in my 20s and then got more spiritual for a while and then went back into my mundane life that, you know, went to, you know, pretty rocky for a while and then had some great times and then uh, lost everything in the economy and then that was right at the beginning of my reawakening. And you say reawakening, so you had awakened prior to that happening to you? Yeah, in my 20s I had some stuff go on to where it was a slight awakening and uh, really made me open up and start looking in this direction because, you know, as when I was a kid it was all religious stuff and I wasn't brought up religious and that's why it's really weird that I had this huge passion for Jesus. It was never something that was in my life every day and something that people were pushing on to me. It was just a desire and passion that I had inside. Um, so... Uh, that's why I think that is just strange. So it's, um, it's almost like it was a beacon for me to go that direction. And, you know, I lived a mundane life. And, you know, at first I thought it was, you know, what a bad way to go, the situations I chose and stuff. But it's not. It's a beautiful thing because it made me, as I started to learn who I truly was and the path I chose through all those things, I realized how beautiful it was as lessons learned. And uh, now what I do today, uh, it serves a great purpose because... I have great understanding and uh, I'm able to put myself in other shoes and, you know, help help them through their issues and stuff. So, yeah. which helps me through mine as well, too, at the same time. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's people out there like, you know, is there a sign that I get? Do I have to hit rock bottom before this happens or do I just have to... It's usually their choice, choice. but... Uh, I mean, normally, yeah, no, normally most people don't realize that they need to make that choice so they can make that choice. That was mine. I, I didn't realize some of the choices I could make in life and that I had control of. And so it was really understanding those aspects and really coming back and understanding who I was and starting to truly love myself and making choices that supported that. And that made me love myself even more. And, uh, and truthfully, my belief is now you won't really ever do anything full force or really go after the things you love unless you really love yourself. Um, and it's understanding how you love yourself as well, too, because there becomes a real passion to it. Because the more I understand how to love myself, I learn how to understand everybody else out there and, and, and learn how to love them in their way. I don't have to understand them fully. I just, you know... I can see that everybody's different, and so I, I love everybody and their, their difference that they are, the, the uniqueness that makes them them, because that is the specialty, and our gift to the world is the uniqueness that everybody carries, and so I definitely want people to embrace that and share that with the world, and even if I don't see eye to eye to, with the person, I try to understand that, and why is that person different, so I can kind of mend the fences in a way, or not create any negative energy within there because I mean from my end I totally stay open and realize I just don't understand everything sometimes and I might not understand their perspective but I can understand we're different enough and that puts me 
and the perspective I need to be to move forward. Does that make sense? And you're willing to learn. You're willing to learn. But that, again, all of that stuff comes back to me loving myself. When I love myself, I realize how important it is to love everything out there and have understanding for everything out there and try to empower everybody I can around me to be their best because when everybody else is at their best, that pushes me to go to be my best again. So you heard it here, step one, build your foundation, start with loving yourself. Yeah. You well, you'll, you'll never, you always have to love yourself. And as soon as you start loving yourself, You'll go, holy crap, man, this is awesome, <laughs> this is easy. Why is it you know? before? Well, <laughs> and it was just because we weren't trained to. We didn't understand how to love ourselves directly. I mean, some people out there probably had some really good parents. But that's the thing. Even if you're the best parent in the world with some of the training through society and stuff, we just don't get it. We don't understand. And so we, you know, you could be the best parent you want to be. And the next thing you know, your kid's spoiled or something or, or feels entitled. Or, I mean, you never know which direction your child might go because of that um, or which direction you went. And, but it's all because of belief systems and programs and stuff. And truthfully, even as I know a lot of people probably might not understand this, but every choice you've ever made in your life and any choice any person has made in their own life, was adding unconditional love for themselves, not anybody else, but for themselves. Until you truly understand, what, well, even when you understand, you really don't understand. I mean, when I'm making choices, even if I'm going to help somebody else out, mm -hmm. it truly is, come, it comes back to being for me. Because if I help you out of a situation that makes me feel good, boom, there's the endorphins. It was for me. I feel better about myself because I was able to go and be of service of somebody else. Does that make sense? It does, it, but it's also, you people are thinking, well, there's a lot of societal norms out there, you know, if I talk about myself too much, am I in ego, and do people just look at me as being egotistical instead of self-love, and what's the difference between pride and self-love, and this is a confusion for a lot of people out there, and they fear it because they fear being viewed as an egotistical person, or as a person who's, you know, snooty and has their nose up. For the people that are the 1% who live the life that they want, they think in that mindset. But for the other percentage, they consider those people to be snooty or don't consider themselves to be well, worthy of that. That's because they're not fully committing to unconditional love for themselves and others. Okay? So they might feel they're doing things out of unconditional love, but it, it's tainted because of the way, way you're talking about it. It's one sided, one butte. Does that make sense? It does. Um, God, I had it as you were going. I, I had it, but I uh, I forgot where I was going to go with this now. Again, what was the question? Kind of really quick. Uh, so ego, being caught in ego, and being more concerned about that and what people think of you as a stereotype and being labeled something. Like okay, that. so let me ask you. Do you you know me for a long time? You know I have pride for myself. I love myself, and I have ego. You know that makes me drive and do things and I feel confident in who I am, but does it feel overpowering at times? Do I? It would depend on the mindset. I, if I was a negative person who wanted somebody to help agonize in misery with, then no, you wouldn't be the person. But well, if I no, to... what, I'm, what I'm saying is when you're hanging around me, I, well, I, what I was kind of looking at is, there, you know, I try to carry a humbleness to me. And realize, yes, I know that I am this, you know, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I love myself. Uh, but I don't ever view myself any better than anybody else. I know how I serve creation on this planet. And I realize how other people serve creation on the planet too. And that nobody is any important than the other person. I mean, the, the janitor is just as important as the brain surgeon because that room needs to be spick and span. Otherwise, that brain surgeon, no matter how good he is, if they get bacteria and, you know, all that infected, the person's SOL anyhow. So we all have a purpose. Exactly. Everybody has their purpose. So, I, yes, you need that pride. You need ego. And but you need it to find needs, your purpose. It, yes, you've got to have passion. But you need to have it balanced, and that's the thing. You've got to realize who you are and what everything else is as well, too. Because you are connected to everything, because you are everything. You are the creative energy. You're a split consciousness of this creative energy, but you are everything. And did we lose it? No, of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> everything started going dark. Um, but you are everything. You are, you, 
you're part of everything and uh, that's where you can, why you're able to get certain information. You could read your ancestors on the other side. You are part of everything. It's just knowing how to tune into that, to tap into these other senses that people are mostly unaware of. So wait, let's go back a little bit. So you said that it was developing self-love was your foundation. What did you have to do after that? Because we know that there's many tools in this, this tool belt of yours uh, in order to you know, have a mindset of, you know, that of being humbled, as you're saying, and, and everything. Yeah, I mean, the next step? you definitely need tools, but truly, that's one of the very first steps is realization on, on self-love, mm -hmm. okay? But the other thing, too, is, is realizing, one of the things I realized through this whole transformation is how I was holding and using my energy, and this is how I give away my energy and stuff like this. I, you know, I come... To where I, I, I've just come from a very negative family. Uh, unfortunately, when I was younger, that was very verbally abusive. So I got pissed off and angry all the time. And I just didn't know the difference. I didn't have a shut off switch. Um, and so things, just, you know, I just went. I, I just, things just happened. But it just, it, not until I realized that I had those choices and that I can make those choices. Um, did I really, you know, and it's all, again, it's all out of self-love and stuff. When I really learned how to love myself, I forget where I was going there. <laughs> Damn it. But, but I mean, it's out of choices and that self-love uh, of, of saying, what do I want out of my life? What's better for me in my life? And that's why self-love is so, so important because you make choices from that point. You realize, what do I want? Oh, I remember why I was going there is because how I controlled my energy and how I use my energy. How I gave my energy away. So the point I was trying to make out of just my childhood and stuff is more, I got pissed off all the time. And so before when I did construction, I could trip over an extension cord and get pissed off. Mm. Okay. And I never realized and I get pissed off and it could ruin my day, it could ruin my week. I mean, it just depends on how bad I wanted to get into that type of energy. The small stuff. Yeah. And, and I didn't realize why I did it either. Once I understood why I was why I was doing stuff like that, then I had more control over it too. Because we have to understand again how we feed ourselves, how the energy is controlled in the body. Well, I was a person that needed to get pissed all the time, so I found reasons to get pissed. It was feeding my cells the energy, the food it needed for me to feel normal. So if you're somebody that gets upset all the time or depressed all the time, you will constantly create that because you're feeding your cells that so your cells feel normal. So you feel normal. If you go into a happy environment and you suffer from any of those, then you're going to feel very, very uncomfortable, even though that's the better situation for you. So you're going to unfortunately go back to what's the comfort, the norm, the thing that feeds the cells the energy it's used to getting because it has receptors for it. So... I had to learn how to change that energy. I had to learn how to, to control my energy. And so back to the extension cord. What I started to realize is when I stepped over that or tripped over the extension cord and didn't step over it um, uh, and got upset, I gave that extension cord my power. Mm -hmm. Now the extension cord was stronger than I was. And that's not in my world, um, as we already talked about. And so I started realizing, my God, I'm giving my energy away to that extension cord. I'm giving my power to that extension cord and it's ruining my day, week, whatever. And so that was a huge realization when I was giving an inanimate object my power. It was stronger than I was. Then that was a big thing clicked in my mind and it was like, oh. And I started looking at how I controlled my energy towards everything, how I thought about certain things. What type of energy do I have towards this? What do I have towards that? But it's about, again, making those choices out of love. Where do I want to be in 10 years? Where do I want to be in 20 years? You need to set goals. You need to have dreams and passion. That's what drives you. That's what gets you going. But you need to be focused on what you want so the creative energy gives it to you. Yeah. And that is the bigger thing, too. So what I suggest to everything, one of the big turnarounds for me is figuring out what did I want out of my life. So this was a big tool I had to use too, because as I said, I was an upset person trying to become a loving person. I saw the way I was giving my energy that is, if you came up to me and you asked me, how was my day? I would sit there and go, oh, it's horrible, blah, 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 blah. And all I'm doing, and once I started to realize what I was doing with my energy is I'm giving you my horrible energy. I'm passing it down. Now believe in what I'm telling you. Join me, let's be miserable. 
miserable together. Come on, please. And so I'm trying to pass this so I can hear somebody go, oh, you're right, life sucks, blah, blah, blah. I agree with you. Yes, and then now with my realization is that, oh my God, I just gave that person my energy. I just passed it off. I am the cancer of the world, and I didn't want to be that. I wanted to be like everybody else. I wanted to make a change. And this is the most amazing thing here, because if everybody just did something like this, the whole world would change. We would change the world. If you want to change the world, just change how you feel about the world and stuff. So just, just do this little aspect. And so my life sucked at the point when I was making this realization. I was in the point of losing everything because the economy had collapsed. And so every month I was losing a little more and going more into debt. And so I realized who I was and what was happening. And so I had to say to myself, well, how do I fix this? How do I go with the right energy and not infect somebody because I can't lie, really. I'm not a liar, so if somebody asks me how I'm doing, what am I going to say? I can't lie to creation because if I say, you know, say it in a lying way, then I'm not making any changes. I'm just lying. Does that make sense? So I had to put energy and feeling behind it. So I was lucky enough to have and still have two beautiful daughters that are healthy. I was healthy. I'm still healthy. I have tomorrow to change everything, and this was my thought form. So. I gathered those so I wasn't lying to myself, and those were the things. So when anybody asked me, how are you doing, I could say, I'm great. Life is beautiful. Because you were grateful for the things you had created gratitude. Yes, I found it, and I wasn't lying to myself, and I had some energy that I was truly holding on to. And every time I said that, I focused in on exactly what I had and what I was really grateful for. And I said, life is beautiful. Life is great. And I meant it. And slowly... And quickly, things changed. Worry started to go away. Yes. Fear, anxiety. Because I was able, because, and then I started to really learn what I was doing here, um, is your feelings are your universal language to the creative energy, okay? And so how you feel about life, how you feel about your existence is what you're telling the creative energy you want to experience. And the creative energy loves you so much it goes, poor old Jeff, you want to experience some more of this? Let me give you some more worry. Let me give you some more stress. Let me give you some more poverty, you know. Let me give you a little bit more of everything that you keep choosing in for because of your feelings, feeling like you got less of. And so I, I started to realize it was all about the feelings. So whatever you feel truly inside is what the creative energy is willing to give you. You choose into your experiences every moment of every day. So it's how you feel. So if I feel depressed, unhappy, worried, stressed out, any of those, but I don't want to feel that way, I have to choose in. Even if I feel stressed at the moment, I have to choose in at that moment and say no more. What does it feel like to feel blissful and happy and not stress or worry about whatever I was worrying about and let it go and really come from that position that it's all okay. I am God. I am that. I am everything. And just let it go. And just be at peace. And then tell, and then you're telling the creative energy, this is what I want to experience is peace and blissfulness, abundance. And if you're feeling short of, start to look at the things you do have plenty of at that moment. Plenty of fresh air to breathe in. <laughs> plenty of sunlight, whatever it might be. Roof over your head. Exactly, whatever it might be. Even if you're, you know, maybe you have no heat and you're cold right now and you're freezing right now, but maybe you have jackets and blankets. At least be thankful you have the jackets and blankets. Find something where you have true gratitude and it starts to change everything instantly. Instantly. But you have to believe into it. If you have any understanding of quantum physics, it shows us. You know, especially the double split experiment. I mean, an amazing study. Uh, and shows amazing results of what we actually can do by our thoughts and, you know, our control. Dr. Moto, the ice. Yeah, that's another one. Um, yeah, Dr. Moto on what the, the uh, information you can put into water and then freeze it. And then if you put negative thoughts, it was a horrible, nasty, frozen uh, thing. But if you put beautiful thoughts like love or uh, intelligence into it or anything like that, it came out to um, freeze up almost like a beautiful snowflake. And each one has a different vibration and came out different. And that's exactly it. So you look at that, and that's the water. That's 98, what, or what is it, 98% of our body water? I forget what it is, but um, a lot of 
78 cents. 78 percent, I think, of water. Uh, 98 percent is quite a bit. Um, but uh, but anyhow, I mean, we're mostly water. So if there's intelligence and thought in the water, our thoughts affect it. I mean, you can tell anyhow by as soon as you have a stressful thought, your body goes right into a negative feeling. And so you know how fast your thoughts could go right into the body. So as soon as you go into that pe uh, peaceful, blissful state and feeling, the quicker you can get back into normality. And sometimes it takes work. Maybe it's hard. Maybe you're in a really stressful situation, you know, uh, a breakup and stuff like that. You know, that, that type of pain can go on for months. So you have to find ways of for, you know, moving that energy in some positive way. And so let's go back to this because this is the thing, even in breakups and everything, you got to find the positive way to move your energy, not, oh, let me just go, you know, have, you know, relations with somebody else or something, you know, and get back into the game or whatever that thought might be because that doesn't benefit you. When you're into self-love and you love yourself, then you're going to do what benefits you and moves you forward. So even if you're trying to save that relationship or you have some hope, that it will get back together, you still want to act like, hey, if you're broken up right now, do what's best for you. Move forward like you're alone, and then usually the relationships come back together anyhow, but always look out for yourself first, because what if it doesn't go back together? You don't want to be sitting there in misery still, waiting, you know, in, in, in the shadows. You want to get on with your life. The quicker you get on with your life, the, the less the pain is, the faster the pain goes away, but always do what's positive for you. And so let's go to this aspect because this is very important. When I really started to come to graphs of what I, understanding of what I needed to do, and I, and I learned this in, self, in a self-help too, actually, now that I really think about it, but it was uh, identifying who I was uh, and what I wanted out of life. So what did I want myself to look like? What's the highest state that I could possibly be? And what's funny is when I, uh, you know, after working on stuff like this, uh, I started to realize it's like, you know, when we get upset at ourselves, we judge ourselves, at, or at least I know I did, and I, I, I realized that whatever I'm doing, I'm sure everybody else is doing too in a lot of ways, but, it, and I see other people, I'm sure, reflecting on this too, but it's like, when I do something wrong, I start judging myself on another part of myself and it's like, who is that other character that I'm judging it on? Because this guy over here, man, this guy's flawless. And I keep judging this character on that I just did this action. So who the hell is that person? And so I started to really look into it. And it's like, who knows who the hell that person, you know, it's just that higher perspective of yourself. So if I keep looking at myself in a lower perspective, that ain't right. I should be looking, if I'm going to judge myself at that perspective, I should find out who that person is and start coming from that perspective so I can act from that perspective and not be so upset at myself when I don't perform from that perspective. So learn from them. It, exactly. So, I mean, that's just a higher perspective on who I was. And so I had to sit there and imagine. If I could imagine the best Jeff possible, who would that be? And, of course, you know, I come reflection would go back to, like, what Jesus was showing us and who Jesus was trying to show us to be. I would never want to be Jesus. I want to be Jeff Fresnel. That's who I was came into this life to be. That's who I want to be is Jeff Fresnel. But I admire the principles of everything about Jesus, so that's you know definitely the type of teaching I want to be at. So I, I started to go try to put myself and imagine what would it feel like to come from that energy, to be that energy. And I just keep imprinting my body every time I got a new feeling of Oh, it probably was, you know, this high vibration and bring it in and just keep, you know, until I could imagine and really imagine in my body, what would that feel like? What would it, I mean, and most of the time you can't even possibly imagine what that would be. But as long as I got a grasp and could start acting from that position, that was better than where I was at already. So that I keep working my way up the ladder. And so when I start to master those skills, then boom, I can start to imagine a little bit more and take myself up the ladder more. And so now I was actually being more of the character I always judged myself against, but I can never measure up to. So uh, do better today than you did yesterday. Always. If you, didn't, if you stay in that philosophy, you always do wrong. I always try to move myself forward at least a little bit every day, whether it's just reading a, a paragraph in a book, whatever I can do, I, I really try to do that every day. But when it's day off, then you know, I'm not gonna push it, you know, it's day off. I mean, there's time to rest and there's a time to work. So, 
You know, that's one thing I've always tried to model myself. But the thing too is when you become that energy that you want to be in the, the way you want other people to see you in life, the great thing is too, is if I do make a mistake and I kind of fall down, I don't have to try to earn my way back up there. I say, wait a minute, I fell. Let me remember what it was like to be that and go right back to that energy and come back from that perspective because any waste of time in between is just wasted time. That's how people that make a million dollars can lose it and remake it again because they know how to get back up. Yeah, they know the energy, they know the vibration, they just move right back up there and that's the thing, you match up your vibration. And if you don't know the vibration, you don't understand the vibration, you can imagine it and start to work your way there and, and, and put yourself in there. That's that being aspect of existence. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Then you can start to understand it better, even if you really don't understand it at the moment. So live in gratitude, act as if, uh, always love yourself, have understanding. Know thyself, yeah. <laughs> know thyself. Yeah, yeah. Understanding's the key, though. Understanding is the true, true forgiveness. You know, you really will never forgive anybody uh, <clears throat> unless you have understanding first. There is just, there's no way around it. I've never been able to do it, and... Uh, I don't think anybody else ever could either. And you have to have understanding of where that perspective of that person came from and, and what they did. Otherwise, you'll always hold on to the grudge, period. And the only way that you really get the understanding is by educating yourself and following the people who you believe to be leaders. Well, mentors. I think, I think because we all have understanding inside, I mean, I, I say there's a self-mechanism inside, self-judging mechanism inside us, we know right from wrong, we feel guilty within, even if it doesn't show, um, but, uh, now I forgot what you're <laughs> Lost the thought. Yeah, lost the thought again where we're going on that, but we definitely, we have a self-regulating mechanism inside of us, uh, we know right from wrong, we can decide what is what's best for us but yeah I mean as far as always moving forward you know once you understand what you want out of life and what you want to be that's the other thing find out who you are then find out exactly what you want your life to look like and and it's fine if you want to change it tomorrow just what you want to do is identify what is it what does it feel like to be that and then you have a goal toward it. yeah and so then you can become it and start to achieve the best thing. And then if it changes tomorrow, that's fine. Just what did I want to be? What's the next thing I want to be? And analyze it. Feel the energy. Become what you want to be, become. And just move right into it. And experience it. And just keep moving forward. Because once you know what you want to be, you can feel it. You know, you're focused in on it. You know how, you know, or at least you have an idea where you're going. You might even not even know the whole path. You just know the end result of what you want it to look like. And that's it. Feel from the end result, and creation will start to hand it to you because you're focused in on the end result. Creation knows how you, what you want, and so it'll start to hand it to you in different ways. You just got to be open to receive it. It's a beautiful thing. Again, you are the creative energy. So true. Yep. It's your belief. You're you're knowing, and that's the other thing too. I mean, so many things that will hold us up and block us is truly our fear. Um. Our resentments, our regrets, uh, the belief system and, and the subconscious. Uh, it is a self-defense me self -defense mechanism to help keep us alive, I believe. Uh, the way I see it now, uh, it also can predict the future <laughs> if you look at it in the right way too. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful thing. But you really need to understand that as well too so you understand where you're coming from. That's where the real tools come in. Finding out how to work with the subconscious. Because the subconscious is an amazing thing, but once you start working with it and understanding why you might have a program that is restricting you from being successful or something like that is amazing. Like the program you were just watching that he was kind of going into stuff like that. A lot of times that fear of success is because, and this is where he was hinting at with the way direction he was going, is that it might take you, take the time away from your kids and your family and other things that you might want to do. So you might not want to you might uh, sabotage and not fo focus in on thriving on your passion and your success. Because you're obsessing about something Yes. Yeah. So there's subconscious and, uh, uh, programs within there that are actually blocking you and fearing you that this is impossible. But other people can do it. Other people have perfect success and have a family. So why can't you do it? You're the same energy, the same program, all that. So it's just learning, finding those programs that are holding you back and restricting you. It's actually keeping you safe. That's why I 
be able to self-defense mechanism. But um, so you just want to find these programs and learn how to basically pull and change that program and change it into a positive program. Well, from a technology perspective, it's like a computer. You gotta always constantly be updating your programs or your software that's out of date, uh, and stuff doesn't start to work properly. So, well, that that's basically it. I, I, you know, I'm you're sure you're downloading new programs in, and that's kind of the jargon that you use too. You say that you download things in, and yeah, well, pull yeah, things out. Truthfully, that's the way I was taught when I was originally taught by. Uh, <laughs> it's like a computer. Yeah, by Dr. Roberts, uh, an amazing doctor, uh, an amazing person, uh, just, I mean, somebody from another planet, this guy was so awesome energetically, uh, still is, still is, <laughs> still around. Um, but that's the way he taught us, uh, but back then, when, we, when I first learned from him, that was how it was on your computer, you would see the files, you know, transferring over and stuff over into the other file, and so that was the best way he could explain it to us, but that's truly the way it is. You know, and uh, the subconscious holds all these different programs that we don't have to think about. And so it's a benefit and sometimes it holds us back. So you're kind of like an IT guy. You help people uh, get rid of those programs that I guess so. Anymore. I guess so. Huh? I guess I could do IT work really easy. Just understand the computer a little better. Right. But yeah, basically that's the same thing. It's just going in and reprogramming and uh, what new experience do you want to have in life? And that's basically it. There's nothing wrong with anything. It's just choosing for that new experience and choosing into a new perception in your experience. And that's, you know, any negative energy from the past, that's all we're doing is changing the perception in a way. I mean, we're, there's a lot of other things, but, you know, we're just changing perceptions in a lot of ways. Uh, the technique I use is Theta Healing. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, technique. Uh, Diana Steibel created it. Or, uh, channeled it in, however you want to say it, she's the founder, and uh, beautiful family, beautiful healer herself, amazing lady, uh, but Theta Healing is amazing on how it gets in, you're able to pull the belief systems in that Theta Brainwave and then reprogram, uh, and it's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's made huge changes for me, I used to suffer with migraines all the time, uh, at least once or twice a month I would have a migraine that would put me down for 10, 15 hours easily, you know, violently sick. Um, now I hardly ever have headaches or anything like that anymore, so, matter of fact, I had a slight headache the other day and I felt like a little baby, it was like, oh god, I want to do that again. <laughs> so, so, so tell us, what is the, uh, the theta brainwave, I mean, is that a signal in our brains, I mean, you yeah, say theta, I mean, what is you that have the mean? different brainwaves, you have alpha, beta, uh, gamma, what other one, there's theta, and then alpha, did I say alpha? Yes. There's one I'm missing, but, but anyhow. Uh, you have different brain waves. Yeah, there's five that we know of right now. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more that we haven't picked up on or whatever at this point, who knows. But uh, uh, just because the way the body works, I, I mean, in nature, I wouldn't be surprised if there's more that, you know. So it comes from a scientific standpoint yeah. of the human biology. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, okay. the brain, yeah, and you just, it's a different state of mind. Uh, like the gamma, we'll go in the gamma, gamma slows down the mind and slows everything down, but that happens when you're in a state of emergency, like if you're getting in a car accident and your car is spinning around and everything starts to slow down, it gives you time to react. It's a self-defense mechanism, keeps you alive. Mm. Yeah. It's, what they, it's the same instinct that they teach in the military. Yeah, and well, the military, yeah, they teach you mind, you know, how to control the mind in different ways, and that's going into the different bra uh, brain waves and stuff like that. Uh, uh, theta brain waves allows you to go into a meditative state, a deep meditative state. The more you go into the theta brain wave and uh, work in that, uh, the deeper you'll keep going and stuff. But yeah, it's a deep theta, or it's a deep, you know, state, meditative state. And so that also uh, correlates with the subconscious then as well. Uh, yeah. So well, yeah, the, we program uh, the subconscious in the theta brainwave. So when I'm, about? okay, so basically the subconscious can be downloaded. That programs that we are talking about can either come from, whether you believe this or not, or you can come from past lives, get passed down through the DNA, um, but also the ones that we pick up in this lifetime. Uh, so their beliefs, core beliefs, like, you know, it's better to live alone than to be in love because love hurts or, you know, whatever it is, you know, money's evil, different things like that are different programs. 
Yeah, and different programs like that. Uh, like I, I just was uh, working with somebody not too long ago, and uh, the energy came up with him. Uh, I got dealt a bad deck of a bad. Uh, I got dealt a bad hand. Luck of the draw. And so I, that came to me. I told him, and he was like, "Yeah, I used to sing that as a kid." I was like, huh. but it's but these are programs that we'll get sometimes. That we, you know, it's the way we believe. It's our belief system. But sometimes we believe things we don't realize we believe, especially because when we create the original program, usually as child, you know, usually most of our work goes down into like, you know, five years old or so, down into that, or maybe a little bit younger and sometimes, but we're trying to find the first time that belief really went into the subconscious. And if we, the farther down we can get, the more we can release at one time basically. And so you want to go into there and it gets programmed in the theta brainwave. So how does that happen? So basically, let's just say when we were learning how to drive our car. Okay. When you're learning how to drive your car, you paid attention to everything. You know, is every mirror straight, you know, got both hands on the wheel driving down. I got the blinker going and stuff. But then after six months or so, then all of a sudden you're like, hey, what's up, Josh? Man, how's it going? Go on, drive all the way across town. Yeah. And you don't even remember driving, really, because you I was too busy talking to you. Is that's because after a while, we train the subconscious to do all the different things we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, it becomes subconsciously. Second nature. Yes, second nature. And so then all of a sudden, boom, I can sit there and talk to you and drive. And usually the subconscious might even drive better than the conscious mind. Um, the conscious mind is more the decision maker, the, the, the part that's in the present moment. The subconscious uh, takes over so many tasks. The subconscious is 88% of the, uh, of the uh, brain capacity or whatever, but, wow. uh, but our usage, whatever you want to say. But, um, uh, so yeah, so anyhow, so then, yeah, while you're learning how to drive the car, you, you are basically in that state of brainwave downloading the different programs into the brain. And then so, one of the ways to pull them out is to go back into the theta brainwave and then, if the client's willing, to pull them and replace them with positive ones. You can replace with positive ones really easy, but what I've found in my work is that if you don't pull the negative program, the negative program just stays dormant in there until it has the right energy and you go in that right energy, then that negative one will pop over the positive one and you'll react from the negative one. You have to be totally positive or focused in on the positive one to keep that in line. Otherwise, as soon as you go unfocused, that negative one can jump over the positive one and you can come and start reacting from the one you did as a child. So, and I know this because I've done this. <laughs> so one of the things you can do uh, on a daily basis is gauge your self-talk and gauge what you say in public and to people. And ask yourself, was it a negative thought or was it a positive thought? And if you have a negative thought, replace it with a positive thought and keep yourself, you know, balanced. And at the end of the day, you lay in your bed and you tally it up and you, you know, say, did I have more negative thoughts than positive thoughts? Did I have more negative talk to people or self-talk uh, than positive thoughts? And, you know, you'll start to notice a, a change as you start to change that mindset. Yeah, I agree. But can I tell you one advice I would say? Forget it all. Forget what happened five minutes ago. Forget what happened a second ago. Just don't, move don't, forward. Right. Move forward from what serves you best at this moment. Don't dwell on things. Yes, don't dwell on things. Don't even dwell on was I a good person today or not. Mm -hmm. Just remember because it is this simple, okay? We make it we make it so complicated with all this brain candy of Oh, you got to try this religion. You got to do this religion. Try this modality. Do this modality. Oh, this will work. The only thing is is do I feel love for myself? Am I happy and blissful at this moment? If I am, then I am in the right energy I need to be. If I'm stressed out, if I'm in fear, then I'm definitely not in the right energy I need to be. And I need to ask myself, why am I in this energy? How is it serving me to be here in this energy? And once I figure out what I'm learning from it, normally then that allows the soul to pass through it because now you learned your lesson and you can release the negative energy and move into the positive energy and keep moving forward at that moment. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. So let's kind of recap here. Uh, so what we've talked about is how you got, you know, from 
where your awakening was to where you are now, and the tools that you used in that was self-love, understanding. Those are the two tools I use every moment of the day. Uh, we have educating yourself with knowledge. Uh, gratitude is in there, and being grateful on a daily basis and remembering the things that we're grateful for. Uh, we learn basically how the subconscious works. So, you know, how we're, what kind of programs we have in our head and stuff. So, if people want to, you know, get a better understanding of this, you know, maybe do it at home while you're watching this video or whatever, but uh, as you start to dig a little bit deeper, I mean, if people really want to get a better understanding of this, they would be able to see you? I mean, do you offer services? How do you help? What do you do? Oh, yeah. I, I love doing sessions. That's the... <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I feel blessed every time I get to do a session with somebody because they're sharing with me a piece of their life and the awesome thing is all I need to know is feelings. I don't need to know stories, anything like that. With with Theta, you just work on the feelings. The feelings are the only thing that matter because that's your true connection again to that Christ energy. Um, so yeah, I, I do sessions as much as I possibly can. Um, I love them. I haven't been doing much in the, you know, well, you know, I've been on so many other projects that I haven't really been on it as much as I'd like to. So yeah, I'm trying to do a lot more again because I definitely miss it because again, it's, it's, I find it a blessing. Second um, nature. Yeah, I got to do it twice yesterday, two sessions, and I, I mean, I just feel so blessed that I got to share in the moment that I got to see with, you know, got to experience with uh, these two beautiful souls, you know, and that they shared that moment with me. I mean, it's really awesome and to be able to assist them through them healing themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the big thing. You heal yourself. Nobody else, I mean, nobody else does. It's you. <laughs> it really is. Uh, in so many ways. Uh, I mean, you can, go to, you can go to healers like me and stuff, but I assist you to heal yourself. Uh, I truly do because that's what I believe in, you know. If not, I'm taking your strength away. If I heal you, then you're, you're still, you're a victim still. And that's not, that's not existence. That's not what I believe in in this life. It's all about empowering yourself, being the true creative energy that you are. And when you realize that and you go again into that unconditional love of what you truly should be, and who you truly are, what this truly is, everything goes away all the All the aches, all the pains, all the diseases. All of it's caused from the fracture of the love. Yeah. Everything, every session I've ever done comes back to one thing. Is the person loving themselves? And I mean, there's different angles on it, okay? So it's that's never the bottom program, but truly what I see is all these programs just mean one thing. I'm not loving myself enough. Yeah. If I'm fearful, then I'm fear somebody's going to take my love away from me, uh, or take their love away from me. I'm fearful I might not earn their love. I'm fearful I might die, and so that I'm fearful again that I'm not good enough, so I'm taking my own love away from me. It always comes back down to love. If I'm stressed out, then I'm fearful that the universe doesn't love me enough to provide with me what I need. Uh, whatever it might be, it, it, to me, I've seen it always comes back down to love. When you bring it all the way down to the last particle, it's love. Nice. Well, so uh, one thing at One World Healing is we like to talk to leaders and healers and trainers in the community in order to really get an understanding of uh, what are they helping people with and, and how does it help, you know, an everyday person who has to deal with bills and finance and relationships and family and uh, and anything else that possibly we can uh, have challenging us in this life and get a better understanding and an alternative way of thinking. Uh, so Jeff, you know, leave uh, our viewers with a final uh, a final theory. You know, if you're to summarize everything to them. Maybe they may not be able to go visit a practitioner today, but what can they start doing, you know, today um, in order to start making their tomorrow better and just make an impact for themselves in life? Well, truthfully, Josh, I'd go back to what we've already been talking about, and that's the understanding and love. You have to start to love yourself because if you're trying to find love from somebody else, as soon as that person walks away or leaves your, your presence, you're searching for love again. You know, uh, 
It's you have to love yourself first before you can even accept that anybody truly even loves you. Because Josh could love me to hell. I mean, if I, if I didn't feel like I love myself and he's sending me love, it's going to go right over my head. I'm going to think maybe this guy is trying to get one over on me. What's going on here? You know, so I won't accept the love in the right way. So you have to learn to love yourself first before you even truly understand unconditional love. And that's why I say it always comes back to you. You have to love yourself first be before you can even understand. When I realize that I want to be loved for being different, I want to be loved for that, I, you know, just because I'm a spiritual person, I want other people to love me and accept me for that. So I have to remember, wait, if this person isn't spiritual, I still need to love them. I, don't, I can allow them and accept them to be the person they are on their journey and be okay with it because I want to be accepted for being the person in the journey that I choose to be on. So I allow myself to love and accept them. And it's, and that's where that understanding comes from. Does that make sense? It does. And so it's truly understanding. We need to start to form understanding to realize what these different things mean to us and how they can benefit us and bring that unconditional love in at the same time. There's so much beauty in this world, but we push it away because we don't understand it, so we're afraid of it. I mean, this veil that's in front of us that we keep talking about going through or whatever, I mean, there's so many beautiful messages on the other side that we can listen from and learn from, but just learn from them, okay? Don't let them, <laughs> you be your own power. You always come from where you want to choose in life, always. Don't allow any other spirits to tell you where to go. Filter with your higher and best thought in mind. Yeah. I, let me, this is, I guess, one of the important things in life, too, to realize is that God didn't come here and say, here you go, here you can live this life, you can have this beautiful soul that you are, you can come into this world, but I want you to do this and this and this for me. I got divine timings for you. You got to do all this. <laughs> no, <laughs> that didn't yeah, happen. Me, money. <laughs> <laughs> because why? That's not unconditional love. If I got put on this planet to do something for God, that has conditions to it. So that's love with conditions. So to me, I don't believe that happened. And the more I've done sessions with people, the more I get to look inside that little glimpse of life in all these different peoples and subconscious and stuff, I get to see the beauty of all of this. Man, I forgot where I was going with that now. It's perspective is what you're really talking about, is seeing it from a different perspective. Someone's one religious belief versus another religious belief is just all based on perspective. Yeah, and it's all beautiful. It's all perfect. You know, it, it is. We need all of that differentness to understand and grow faster and grow more. It's, it's all beautiful. It's, everything in life is um, beautiful. But yeah, choose what... You, it's your divine time. It's your thing. Oh, I remember exactly what I was going to say now. Is that we all have the same actual divine timing, I think. Or divine purpose, I should say. Okay? And it's only one thing. And that's to learn to love yourself. <laughs> that's it. Every single person's journey here on this planet is to learn to love themselves. And once you learn to love yourself, you will definitely learn how to love everybody else around you. And this will become a loving planet in no time. It'll be awesome. I mean, you, you heard it here. Jeff for now. One World Healing. Mr. Blue. Signing off. Love yourself. Have a great Peace. week.